Hey y'all, Kevin here with another WebDriver IO video. I got an email the other day with a question that I thought was a really good topic to cover. And so I wanted to cover it in a video and uh, let's take a look at what this question is. They mentioned that they are trying to convert a test case that checks for broken links on a website. So what it does is it finds all the elements on the page that have a tag name of A, basically a link element and A tag, and then go through each of them and make the request based off of um, the URL that they pull off of that link tag. And they check to see what the status of that link tag is. And they wanted to know, can they do this using WebDriver IO? And uh, what's the best way to check for broken links using WebDriver IO, whether there's like a, a service for that or um, whether they should just use the request package that Node has and, uh, and parse the response using raw JavaScript and Node.js. So I've got my text editor open now. And the first thing I want to do is create a basic outline of how this test is going to look. So the first thing we need to do is get all the links on the page with WebDriver IO. That's a pretty simple. All you're going to do is say um, constant links is equal to, and then we'll just use the double dollar sign function uh, to check for, this is going to grab all the links on the page. Let's add a little comment, say, get all the links on the page. Okay. And then the second thing we're going to do, we're going to get all the hrefs, all the URLs that we need to check from those links. And so we're going to do a little bit of um, more advanced JavaScript here. We're going to use a map function. So dollar sign, dollar sign $A is going to return an array, a collection of links, a whole bunch of links. And um, with, that, with that collection, with that array, we are going to map through it, go one by one through each of them. So I'm just going to type the code because it might make a little bit more sense once you see it typed out. So it's to map. And with the way that the map works, it you're going to pass in a function. So this will look like function. And then there's going to be a link. And in that we're going to return a value. In this case, we're going to say get attribute. And that attribute is going to be href. So uh, what we've got going on here, we are running the map function. We're passing in a, a function that takes in each link that's part of the links array. And then we run the WebDriver IO get attribute command saying we want to get the value of the href attribute. So that's what's going on there. Now we can shorten this up a little bit if we'd like to by using um, JavaScript shorthand notation. And with this, one thing we don't have to do is if all we're doing is returning a value, then uh, we don't need to use the return statement. We don't need to use curly braces. And we also don't necessarily need to use a, um, uh, the parentheses around the link since we only have that one, um, that one uh, parameter being passed in. Usually I'm kind of on the fence on whether I like this shorter notation. Sometimes I like it a little bit more verbose, a little bit easier to read, but this really helps uh, keep all this concise. Um, and I think it's pretty easy to understand what's going on right here. The fact that the, the variable name is URLs and that all we're doing is calling get attribute. Um, I think it's pretty easy to read. So conciseness is pretty nice to go with right now. So the last thing we need to do in our test is make requests for all of these links. So we have a list of URLs, uh, an array of URLs. A map will always turn, return an array. Um, of all our URLs, we're going to make a request out using Node, using a uh, module called Node Fetch. We're going to make a request out to each of those uh, URLs and check the status on them and make sure that they all return a good status, anything below 400. So that's going to look kind of like this. We're going to use our URLs array and we're going to say for each of the items in our array, we're going to get the URL. And with that, we're going to make some sort of request. I'm just going to gloss over that right now. So let's say make request to the URL. And then we're going to use our assertion library to say expect response to be below 400. 
that's kind of what our assertion is going to kind of kind of look like. So this is the basic outline of what we want our code to be. So let's go ahead and turn this into an actual test. Well, I have open right now a website that I've been working on called trywebdriver.io. Um, the regular URL is try.learnwebdriver.io.com just because I don't have access to the official webdriver.io uh, URL. But regardless, it's a, it's a little website that uh, basically allows you to run a webdriver.io test, a very basic one um, in the browser instead of having to run locally. So um, I wanted to give this a shot and um, let's convert what we have uh, into an actual working WebDriver IO example. So I've got the contents of my previous test um, pasted, paste those out. We're going to use a uh, website called the internet oh, here and in it it has a page that has various status codes, and this is going to be really helpful for us. Um, the internet is a website that's great for testing different scenarios. So I'm just going to paste that up here, and then here I will paste my URL that I want to go to. This will get all the links on the page, and then this will get all the URLs, and then for each of these URLs, we'd make our request. But we haven't actually made a response, so I'm going to comment that out, and all I'm going to do here is log out that URL, and that should be working. So I'm going to press Run Test, and we're going to see if this works. Okay, so we got our URLs down there listed out, and um, five URLs. We haven't checked anything to see whether the status code returns good or not, but uh, we do have a passing test. One thing I did forget is I probably want to update this value, this describe. So we're going to say broken link test. It should check the page for broken links. Now with our test, we want to be able to use the node fetch module. I had mentioned that before, but um, I don't have that functionality set up on this uh, little test website, but I do have the ability to download a copy of this test. So we're going to do that real quick. And now it's downloaded. Let's go ahead and open that directory up in our terminal. Okay, I've got my directory open up in my terminal. I'm going to run two commands. The first is to run npm i. This is going to install all the pre-built, um, pre-packaged modules that come with the download of that uh, copy of the test. It's got WebDriver IO, it's got the um, uh, Chai assertion library, um, it's got the Mo Mocha framework, all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, if you look at the directory structure, there is a package JSON already in there. Even though all we were writing is one test, and that test does live in this test directory, um, when you download a copy, it comes with all these different configurations. So the next thing I want to do is install that node fetch library that we were talking about. And um, what this is going to let us do is make different requests out to all these different URLs. Okay, so that's installed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code. The first thing I'll do is open up this test file that gets uh, saved, and we're going to open that in Sublime Text. So here's the file, same as before. Um, the first thing I want to do is require the node fetch library. So I'll do that, just do var fetch is equal to require node fetch. And I could use a constant here, but um, it uses a var. So really, uh, here, I'll just change those over to constants just to be a little bit more semantic, I suppose. Um, and then inside of here, I'll get rid of this console log URL. And I'm going to write a little bit of pseudocode that's going to be a constant of the status. Um, it's going to be the constant of the response is equal to fetch and URL. Now, there's a problem with this code that uh, we're going to talk about right now. The problem is um, fetch, like any other request out there, is going to make a request out to the URL that we passed into it. 
and it's going to have to wait until that server finishes whatever it's doing and makes that response back to us. Now that's not a synchronous request. It's not something that um, is natural for node code to have to wait for. So um, we could get around this usually when in fetch you use promise, but um, we are going to use a tool called async await. And I'll link to a video that covers that um, in the description. So check that out if you want to learn more about it. But the basics of it is we know that this is going to be a promise. This is going to be an asynchronous call um, that used to have to have like a, a callback function if you're familiar with callback functions. But um, now we want to kind of avoid all that messy code and we're going to use the async await and what we're going to say is we're going to await the response of this this is like a keyword for javascript to understand that this is a asynchronous request but we want to wait for it as if it were synchronous because we're not worried too much about the having to uh, handle multiple requests all at the same time, um, requests coming in. This is a test. This isn't a server that's running code. Um, this is just a test and we, you know, we really do want to wait for this response to come in before we do anything. Now that's not the only thing we have to do. We also need to define that the function is asynchronous. Um, in order to use the await keyword, we have to tell it that it's an asynchronous function. To do that, you use the async keyword on the function itself. And um, I'm not actually certain how it works with these uh, fat arrow functions. So I'm just going to convert it over to a, a regular anonymous function right now. Um, but we'll probably end up converting this back later on. Uh, but for now, all I want to do is say that this is an asynchronous function that um, is going to have an await somewhere inside of it. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and log this response out. We'll save our file and let's give this a run on our local computer. So I'll use the normal npm test command and it should start up a local Selenium server. Um, I believe I have that set up in the download script that actually pulls in that Selenium standalone service for you. Um, to make it easier for you to run your tests. Uh, and now we're just kind of waiting for the browser to pop up and run. You can see it's running here and we actually did get a response back. We got our response objects back here. One, two, three, three responses, which is a few less than I was expecting but it may have been because one of those returned with a 404, so that may have caused an issue. Not entirely sure what, what happened. What's important for right now, though, is this status code that came back. So this is what we're going to run our assertion against, is the status, and we're going to check that that status is below uh, 404. So let's go ahead and update our code. So in our code, we uh, I'm going to get rid of this log. Um, we've already made the request to the URL, so I'll go ahead and move that there. And then I'm going to uncomment this assertion that we made, and we're just going to change that over to status. So we're going to expect the status to be below 400. Um, I'm going to save this and go back to my command line, and let's run this test one time again. This time we should expect a failure, but we don't get it. Okay, so I did a little bit of investigation on this and I kind of messed up in a couple ways. Um, remember when I was counting the responses that came back and I only got three? Yeah, that was an issue. Um, it turns out that this also needs to be passed because this is an async function. Um, it We need to wait for this async function to finish running. So we need to await that and make this function async. Now, I believe that Mocha is smart enough to see that this is an async function and handle it on its side. So we don't need to make this an async function as well, but we do need to make sure that this is an async function. Otherwise, another thing we could do is return URLs um, dot for each. And that's the way, um, that's because of the way that um, 
async functions work. They're actually, I believe they're returning a promise or something like a promise that can be read by promise libraries. So if we were to return it, that should also work. But um, there's another issue going on here. And uh, just to kind of demonstrate what's going on, I, I logged out the response status that came back just to make sure that the response was good. And when I went to um, assert here that the response status was below 400, if we jump over to the terminal, we will see that I've got my 200 here, which is fine. My 500 should have thrown an error, but instead I get a uh, unhandled promise rejection warning, basically saying that the promise that um, the promise that was run had an error on it, but we didn't handle it. At 200 again, no issue. 301, no issue because it's below 400. But if we get to another 400, we have another error, and so uh, we have this assertion error. The way that assertions work is that uh, if there's a problem, it's going to throw an error. And usually the test code, the function that um, is being run will handle that. Well, our function is actually inside of here, so it's not going to handle it and it gets thrown. It's all it's it's kind of a mess at this point. So there's actually a better way to do this. And one of the issues with this code right here is that uh, this await is happening. And so um, we don't actually have to wait for the first response to return before making the second response. But in here, we are waiting for it. We're going one by one. So it's actually a, a little bit of a slower test. What if instead we wait, we make all the requests individually, asynchronously, and then wait for all of them to return and then process the results. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. So what I'm going to do is instead of handling the assertion here, I'm going to move that out. And then I'm going to save these as a request. And I'm going to get rid of this await. And I'm going to get rid of this async. So I'll drop back down to this shorthand notation. And the only thing I want to do is make that fetch URL call. That's it. And so a lot of this code is going to just disappear. We're going to get rid of the await because at this point, uh, we actually don't want to wait for this fetch to complete before returning the status. We're going to make this call and save it to the request and then go to the next one, make the call, save it to the request, go to the next one, so forth and so forth. So all that data is going to be saved to this request in the end. What we need to do is wait for all of the requests to go through. So now we've got all these requests out there. They're doing their thing individually. So now we need to wait for all the requests to go through. So to do that, we're going to do Vondi. We're going to do const responses is equal to, and we're going to use a Node.js um, addition. If you're on Node version 6, maybe, version 8, maybe, or more, you have this uh, promise object that you can say for all of these promises, and remember um, fetch the fetch library returns a promise um, whenever it makes a call, um, and the await and async can handle that promise. So we're gonna say for all of these requests, and that should be requests, all of these requests, we're just gonna wait for them all to finish. And we do need to use the await keyword here because um, normally you do like promise.all.then, but instead we're going to use our await keyword because it's a little bit cleaner. Okay, now that we've got all of our responses back, we need to get the status codes back from those. And it would be super cool if we could do like responses.status to be below, um, but unfortunately that's not really going to work. So instead, we're going to use this map function again to get our status codes. We're going to say status codes is equal to responses.map and then we're going to get our response and we're going to return response.status. Now there might actually be a better way, a, a shorter way to write this um, to get that status property off of all of the responses, but um, this was the best that I could come up with. If you have a better way of doing this, um, that's better than what I came up with here. Uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'd love to learn and, and get better at this. So this is going to be an array of status codes that um, we need to figure out how we're going to add into an assertion. So to do that, um, I'm going to actually just do a status 
codes dot for each. And then we're going to get our status code. We'll use our shorthand again and move our assertion up. And here it will be status code to be below 400. And uh, this should throw an error. Uh, two times it should fail the test two times, but I think it's only going to fail it once because once it fails once, it's going to just say that that test failed. Let's try it out in the uh, terminal and see how it runs. I got a weird error and it's on line 15. Promise to all requests. Uh, I know what I did wrong. I used for each here and this was supposed to be a map. Um, for each doesn't return anything. For each just uh, lets you run something and then forgets about everything. But uh, we needed to return the fetch request back to this request array. So that's what went on. We got a response is not defined. Let's see where else I messed up. Response.map. This should be responses.map. Little typos, they get you. Okay, we finally have a failing test. Expected 404 to be below 400. Now you might be wondering why this expect worked inside of a function when it didn't work inside of that other function. And the reason is we're not running a asynchronous function here. So this whole thing isn't wrapped up in all the promise code and, and uh, that environment. It's just a pretty regular old um, function. And so if an error gets thrown on it, it just gets passed straight up to the parent function, which is here. And that gets handled by Mocha and lets us know that there is a failure in our test. So we have a failing test. Let's just double check that these tests will work on a good page. So I'm going to go back to the internet and I'm going to go to this 200 page. I'm going to copy that URL. Both of these links should work. So if I go back here and paste that correctly and run in my terminal, I should have a passing test. And there we go. We have our passing test. So that's how you write a test that checks all the elements on a page, have a certain attribute, and then add a little bit of Node.js in there with the request um, through the Node fetch module. I'll have links to all this down in the description. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if I messed anything up, um, if I could improve this in any way. And I'll also have the link to the code so you can try it out. And also check out that uh, try.learnwebdriverio.com website and let me know what you think about there that um, I'd love to keep working on that. So I, I'd love to get some, some feedback from folks out there. And uh, thanks for watching and have a great week.